Welcome back guys, my name is Walker and welcome to A Tale of Two Wastelands Modding Guide Part 2 User Interface. One of the first things I notice with what seems like any Bethesda game is the user interface. It just seems oversized, clunky, and out of place. Um, there are quite a few mods that go about trying to fix this and it seems like in any Bethesda game, I mean in, in Skyrim the most popular mod on the Nexus is uh, UI overhaul. Uh, I mean it's just way too clunky it looks like it's designed for a console if you open up the time menu I mean it takes up almost the whole screen um, it really just looks like it's designed for if you're sitting at a TV really far away um, and not really for a monitor which if you're gonna be modding Fallout New Vegas or a Tale of Two Wastelands you're definitely gonna be using a monitor so today we're gonna be going over some mods and how we can fix this issue interface mod we're going to be going over today is the Darnified UI. Um, this in my opinion is essential. I cannot play the game without this mod. Um, it shrinks down the text and in, in general just makes it look a lot better. So this does have a little bit of extra steps but it's going to be worth it in the end. So I'll leave links to these mods down in the description but what you're going to, want to do is go over to this page scroll down until you see downloads and then you're going to see DUINV test version 4. Click on that, it'll download. We're going to open it up over in our download section. And you can see this actually looks quite a bit just like a normal mod, and it really is. So all you got to do is I like to put them on my desktop, but you can do it from wherever from wherever you want. Open up mod organizer, find that zip file, double click it, name it whatever you want, I'm going to name mine, Darnified UI, hit manual, make sure it looks okay, and install. In a lot of mods that's where you'd stop, but this actually is going to require some any editing. So let me show you what you might get if you don't edit the any files. All right, right off the bat, you can already see that there's an issue. This looks huge. Um, actually, it looks bigger than like what you'd see on like if you were just using the standard user interface. Um, but we do know that the mod is installed. This this does tell us that. And if you look over here, the quit is like halfway cut off, halfway not. So yeah, there's some any editing we're gonna have to do, and I'll show you what the difference that makes is. So if you go back over to this page you'll see that under the install directions it tells you what to edit so you're going to want to put it in three different any files uh, your fallout default any your fallout any and your fallout prefs any um, you actually aren't going to be editing the first one which is the fallout def default any because we're using mod organizer and that just keeps two any files here so go ahead and copy and paste this so copy then we're just going to go over here, back to Mod Organizer, Control F, and hit Find Fonts. And there it is. So all we're going to do is just erase what's already there and paste the new stuff. Save that. Go over to the press. Same exact thing here. Erase what's under Fonts. Paste the new stuff. All right, now we'll hop back into the game and see what the difference is. Alright, so right away you can see a few differences. Uh, obviously this is smaller again. Um, looks like it should. So you look over at the fonts, it's much nicer, better looking font, and everything's a little bit smaller too. So let's load it up and see what it looks like in the game. <clears throat> Alright, so as you can see, the crosshair is much smaller. Uh, the HP and AP bar is much smaller. The quest sign, uh, dialog up in the top left is smaller. Um, if you open up your Pip-Boy, everything's smaller so you can see like if you have a whole bunch of stuff in your inventory you won't have to scroll down like you would in the default game. You can just see it in a nice neat list here. Um, open up the time menu and it doesn't take up half the screen anymore. It looks much nicer. Alright so the next user interface mod we're going to be installing is the weapon mod menu. If you go over to the Nexus page, you'll see its main four features, which this is another mod I consider pretty much essential. Um, it allows you to remove attached weapon mods. Uh, it gives you information about each uh, 
about the mod that you're going to be using. So as you can see here in the picture on the Nexus, um, he has this mod installed, which increases his ammunition capacity by five. And it also shows him all of his available mods um, that he has in his inventory. So yeah, we're going to go ahead, go over to the file tab. We're going to have to download this manually because it doesn't have a download with manager button. Pull it out of your downloads. Let's take a look inside. So as you can see, it's just a faux mod. We're going to drag and drop this under our desktop. Get rid of this archive. Go over to Mod Organizer. Find that faux mod. Double click it. Wait for this to run. Should take just a second. Yep, there it is. And we're done. That's installed. The Nexus, we're going to be looking at the mod configuration menu. Uh, this mod is pretty essential for other mods as it adds a in-game menu that allows you to edit the setting of most popular mods. Um, Tale of Two Wastelands, for example, has some settings you can edit when you download this. So all you're going to do is go over to the page, scroll down to the Files tab, and download with Manager. This one's pretty easy. Um, there is a bug fix but you don't need to download this unless you're getting a gray start menu. If you are starting up the game and it's gray when you start when you load into the game you will need to download that and install it as well. <clears throat> Alright so go back to manager downloads tab double click to install and this is going to be a external installer so looks good install and that one's done. Alright so moving on to the next one we have one HUD uh, by Gopher. Um, this is kind of a combination of a lot of really popular mods by him. Um, it combines, let's see here, immersive HUD, adjustable HUD, and extra HUD, also formerly known as primary needs HUD. So this is going to allow you to edit and change some of your HUD settings. So as you can see in this photo here, he has his compass up at the top. He has some primary needs over here. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with this. Um, so yeah, we're going to go over to the Files tab, Download with Manager, and we are using Darnified, so we're going to grab this Darnified patch as well. Now first you're going to want to install just the one HUD. Click Manual, make sure it looks okay, it looks good. And then the Darnified patch, Manual, and when this window here pops up, it says Merge, Replace, Rename, Cancel, you want to hit Merge. This is going to overwrite the files that it needs to be compatible with Darnified. And that one's installed. Alright, so up to this point, I would consider pretty much all of the user interface mods we've installed essential for this guide. Um, everything from here on out in this part is going to be what I would consider optional. Uh, things that are going to make the game experience a little better, but you don't necessarily need these. Um, and we're going to start that with the Lazarus project. This mod adds a lot of different functionalities and makes it kind of like more a little bit more like Fallout 4 or more like a first person shooter so some of the big things it does is it adds a wheel menu um, so it's like for items or weapons so you can just open up the wheel menu in game and if it's on your hotkeys you can see what like the weapon and stuff or the armor you want and you can just select it without pausing the game without going into your inventory just from the wheel menu um, <clears throat> It also has a new companion wheel that, that takes place as a vanilla one. Uh, VATS criticals, if you've played Fallout 4, you'll know that once you've charged up your VATS enough, you can unleash a critical strike. Similar to that, adds ladder climbing. Um, but this says not thoroughly tested. I'm not going to be using the ladder climbing feature. And you can disable any of these. This is why it's important to have mod configuration menu, because any of these options that you don't want to use in this mod, you can just disable with the mod configuration menu. So go over to the Files tab, download with Manager, double click to install, let's hit Manual, see what we got. Looks good, so hit OK, and there we go, that's installed. All right, moving on to the next one, we're going to take a look at a couple of different mods here. Um, we have Fallout 4 Quick Loop for New Vegas and Loop Menu for New Vegas. So. If you've played Fallout 4, you'll know that you can loot stuff without actually pausing the game. Uh, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 3, kind of a negative feature of those games. Um, the game stops when you go to loot something. So these mods do essentially the same thing. Um, the Fallout 
for Quick Loot for New Vegas has way more endorsements than Loot Menu. Personally, though, I think I'm going to be using Loot Menu. This is going to be up to you guys' personal preference, but um, and I don't remember where I read it here, but the author here, I know he's very active over on the Tale of Two Wastelands forums. Um, and somewhere in these comments, if you want to go through them, he explains what the difference is and basically just says that his is nearly the same thing. It's just a little... He added a little more functionalities. So I'm going to go with the loot menu for Fallout New Vegas. Um, I'll leave a link to both of these in the descriptions and let you decide which one you want to use. But I am going to be using loot menu. So we're just going to go over to the page, file tabs, download with manager. And it says requires Lutana New Vegas script extender here. We downloaded that in the first part of this guide. So if you haven't seen that, go check that out and make sure you follow that because this is kind of all assuming that you're going in order here. Alright, that's activated. Go over to the next optional one. This is JIP command, Companions Command and Control. You can, pretty, you can get a pretty good idea of what this mod does just by going to the Nexus page and looking through the pictures. Um, this works with custom companions as well. But basically what it does is it adds a little in-game uh, heads-up display element that allows you to control your companions in a simpler way than what it is in vanilla. We'll just leave it at that. So all you're going to do is go to the Files tab, download with Manager, open up Mod Organizer, Manual, let's see, it looks good, and that's installed. Next one's going to be JIP Improved Recipe Menu. This just makes the recipe menu look a little better. Um, it also fixes some, not bugs necessarily, but it adds some improvements. So, for example, um, it increases the limit of how many things you can craft at one time. And it, it prevents the menu from closing down every single time you craft something like in vanilla. So just go over, download with manager. Sometimes this happens. I just you just have to refresh the refresh the page down with the manager. There we go. Open up mod organizer. Double click to install manual, and it's just an ESP file, so we're all good. And that's installed. All right. So traits menu darnified. Um, this is just a mod that adds the darnified HUD to traits menu. Um, not sure why it's not covered. I think the traits menu might have been added into the game after Darnified was no longer being worked on. So just download that with Manager. Simple as that. Manual. And that's done. Activate that. Okay, Misc Items icon. This is just a mod that um, basically instead of the generic scrap icon being used in the game for like some of the items, like say it's a... It's a um, like a camera, pre-war money, all the stuff listed here, it's going to add um, special handmade icons into the game for those items, which I think is just a nice touch. And not necessarily, uh, what's the word? Not necessarily essential, but I prefer to have this. It's just a little bit of extra immersion. You can never go wrong with more immersion. Alright, so double click to install that. Alright, this one is set up incorrectly, so all you got to do is right click data, hit set data directory, and then it says looks good, and install. Alright, so the last one is the user interface organizer. This is going to be the most important one that we install. This is essential. I, I know I said that everything up to, after this point would be optional but this one is essential. This makes everything work together. Um, there's all kinds of bugs. If, you, if we just went into the game right now, you'd see all kinds of crazy stuff. So this is what's going to make all those work together. Um, if you scroll down on the page, you can see everything this helps work together. Um, you can even download some of these if you want. I'm not going to be downloading anything other than I already have. So scroll up to the Files tab, Download with Manager,
double click to install and this is going to run a external installer check and that's installed so now we're going to go over to our plugins file our tab we're going to select loot and we're going to run loot we're going to sort our ESPs Fallout New Vegas is selected. All you gotta do is hit sort plugins. It'll take just a second. Alright, and they're sorted, so we can exit out of this, hop into the game, and see what we've got. Alright, so we loaded back into the game, and as you can see, all we have on our heads up display now is a dot dead in the center of the screen, similar to Fallout 4. Um, we're going to hit escape here and you can see we have the mod configuration menu. All of this stuff here is things you can edit. So if you look at extra HUD for example, you can change the clock to 24 hours, 12 hours. Um, you can change, make it color coded, set primary needs values so you can change this to percentages where it shows your primary needs as percentages, meters or bars or absolute values. Um, same thing with the rest of the stuff and this you can actually move stuff so let's see here if you want to show clock then you can click to move it so if you see up here in the top right oops, that's up here in the top right so it says use the numpad 5 or the spacebar to reset the ASDW keys to move so as you can see, I'm, pr I'm pressing down A right now and it's moving it across my screen and you can put this wherever you want. So say I want it just up here in the very top right hand corner. Right there. Press OK to remove this message. So once you're done moving it, you just press any other key. So I'm just going to press G. Alright, and now it's set there. I mean, I can make it not show the clock and it's still going to be there where I set it when I show it. So any of these have has that option. You can move any of the stuff. And this is for the Lazarus project here. This is where I was telling you you can disable anything. So say I don't want let's see. Let's say I don't want VATS critical. I can just hit uncheck mod enabled and I will no longer have the VATS critical. It's as simple as that. Alright, and let's see, we should have a hit marker too, so let me find this, uh, man it's been so long since I played. So yeah, as you can see we have a hit marker, just like in Fallout 4. Uh, you can disable that too. Also you can see the loot menu working here, and let me find just something to look in, this mailbox. So yeah, just like uh, Fallout 4. You don't have to stop the game. You just go up to a container, uh, look at it like you're about to loot it, and then it'll bring up the menu. It should do it here too. Coca Cola. So, yeah, adds one of the best features I think of Fallout 4 into Fallout New Vegas. So, yeah, uh, we've pretty much got all of our user interface stuff installed. Um, the next episode, I think we are going to be talking about, let me see here. We're going to be talking about Project Nevada next episode. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope to see you in the next one.